Almost every audio amateur who is not even a math expert has definitely heard about the so-called Fourier transformation or FFT, TFT and other names. This transformation is the basis of spectrum analysis, which forms one of the fundamental aspects of sound equalizing and synthesis. Fourier transformation is a highly mathematical phenomenon, thus not everybody who at least once was interested in its essence could grasp it completely. We shall try to explain the essence of the method in a simple and understandable way without delving into a complicated integral calculus. DNA duplex solar activity cycles and complex electronic signals can be mathematically rendered as a number of wave curves. This idea forms the basis of a powerful analytical instrument called Fourier transformation. The first person to reveal this method to the world was a French mathematician, Jean-Baptiste Joseph Fourier. Thus, the transformation was called after his name. Fourier transformation happens every time when we hear a sound. Our ear does automatic calculation. Our conscious mind can do it only after several years of math studies. Our hearing organ provides transformation, rendering the sound as oscillatory motion of particles of elastic medium. The motion propagates in the form of waves in gaseous fluid or solid environment. It propagates in the form of a spectrum of successive volume values for tones of various pitches. Our brain transforms this information into a perceived sound. A sunbeam laid out in spectrum is also a physical analog of mathematical transformations. The intensity of a sunbeam which enters the prism is constantly changing in time. The light which leaves the prism is divided in space into separate clear colors, that is frequencies. This spectrum has mean amplitude for each frequency. Thus time-dependent intensity function has transformed into a frequency-dependent amplitude function. Fourier transformation can render a signal changing in time as dependence of frequency and amplitude. The transformation also gives information about the phase. The most widespread signal analysis in digital electronics is transformation of time signal into frequency domain for receiving the signal's frequency spectrum. Let's try to do such procedure in a diagram form over a small section of the curve which describes sound oscillations. Let's take a curve and set time on one axis and amplitude on the other. When digitizing the signal, we'll be getting a data set. Where one line will have time and another line will have amplitude value at those moments of time. We shall note down relative values. Thus we get a two-dimensional data set. After performing Fourier transformation over it, we shall be able to get the second data set from which a previous set can be restored. But it will have data not on time amplitude for the whole signal, but for each of the frequencies. In other words, you saw such diagrams. So we shall be able to see separate amplitude diagrams for frequencies of 1, 2, 3 and 4 kilohertz. Thus, if we get a line diagram, that is when the given frequency does not have any surges along the amplitude, then we can remove this data from the set and reduce its volume in this way. This allows to use Fourier transformation for compressing digital data in such algorithms as MP3 and other audio data compression formats.
The main advantage of Fourier transformation is that the program designed by Fourier is now being gradually implemented in the form of hardware. There are special microcircuit controllers, analog to digital and digital to analog converters, which can do the transformations themselves. Users and developers benefit from this, as they don't have to use or develop such software. It is important to note that Fourier transformation was the first transformation to be performed with the computer method. When working with the analog signal, you always have to track its level, as even small time dips will prevent you from restoring the signal completely and will bring big distortions. At the same time, frequency response may have a big portion of data which may be lost, but still it will be possible to restore the signal. There is a famous Nyquist theorem, which is also known in Russian science literature as, as a sampling theorem. So we should also consider the fact that according to it, in order to be able to restore the analog time continuous signal from its samples, the sampling frequency must be at least two times greater than maximum sound frequency. Sound frequency which equals half the sampling frequency is called Nyquist frequency and is a maximum frequency which can be saved and reproduced correctly by the given digital system. Thus, if a real analog signal which we are going to transform into a digital form contains frequency components from 0 to 20 kHz, then the sampling frequency of such signal must be at least 40 kHz. That means that in this case, maximum spectrum frequency which can be acquired through fast Fourier transformation when digitizing data will be 20 kHz.